1,000 earthquakes in three weeks in a key Southern California seismic zone. We are watching this activity closely, the scientists are saying. This is by Michael Snyder via the end of the American Dream blog on Zero Hedge by Tyler Durden. In a key seismic zone, approximately 40 miles east of downtown Los Angeles, there have been more than 1,000 earthquakes since May 25th. Now, a lot of people will say they live in the area and they have not felt anything. Well, that's because a lot of them may be a lot lower than 3.5 magnitude or closer to 4. And in that case, many people may not have felt them. Now, needless to say, it would be quite alarming for the entire state of California to experience more than 1,000 significant sized earthquakes in just three weeks. But in this case, we're talking about an area that is less than a square mile in size. And what makes this even more concerning is that all of these earthquakes are happening in a location that is very close to the San Andreas Fault. Could it be possible that the San Andreas Fault is about to wake up in a major way? I don't know about you, but if I was living in Southern California right now, I would find this sort of news to be extremely unsettling. A thousand quakes in the same tiny area. A flurry of more than 1,000 small earthquakes has rattled Southern California over the past three weeks. The quakes have occurred in an area covering less than a square mile, less than a square mile, in San Bernardino and Riverside counties, roughly 40 miles east of downtown Los Angeles. The United States Geological Survey map depicting the uptick in seismic activity shows a thick collection of dots, a rather unsettling sight. Of course, it's perfectly normal for California to experience earthquakes. They happen on a daily basis, and normally they are not anything to be too concerned about. But to have this many earthquakes concentrated in an extremely limited area is definitely unusual and worrying. According to USGS science advisor Ken Hudnut, this current earthquake activity, this swarm, is a little different than what we've seen before, he says. Quote, in detail, if you zoom in on it and look at the pattern and how it's evolving in time, it's a little different than what we've seen before, he says. He explains, we get these swarms, but we don't see exact repeats. Obviously, it's very disruptive to the people who are feeling these earthquakes. We're watching this uh, activity very closely, he says. Normally, earthquake swarms subside after a certain period of time. But so far, there are no signs that this swarm is going to end. Instead, we just keep seeing quake after quake. That does not mean that a major event is imminent, but without a doubt, there are good reasons to be concerned about what's happening. As geophysicist Andrea Lenos recently explained, very small earthquakes increase the likelihood that there will be more seismic activity, and she stressed that we do not know we do know, she said, that a big earthquake is going to happen someday. But any time you have an increase in the number of small earthquakes, according to Andrea Lenos, a research geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey, quote, you're likely to increase the likelihood of a slightly larger earthquake happening, end quote. And she says, I would redefine normal as you should still be prepared for a large earthquake. Lennis told the paper, we don't know a big earthquake is going to happen. Californians have been hearing that the big one is going to hit the San Andreas Fault for a very long time. We even had a major Hollywood movie starring The Rock made about such a quake, but it still has not happened yet. But one day it will. In fact, a chair of the UCLA's Civil and Environmental Aid uh, Emergency uh, Engineering Department insisted that such a quake is, quote, an existential threat to our economy, our ability to live here, end quote. Also, there's no fault that is more likely to break in California than a San Andreas fault, says Jonathan P. Stewart, professor and chair of UCLA's Civil and en Environmental Energy Engineering Department and an expert in earthquakes. He says small local quakes in the Northridge earthquake, San Fernando earthquake, they can kill people in the dozens, and they have freeways coming down, and they can affect dams, and all of that is bad, he says. But it does not really pose an existential threat to our economy, our ability to live here. 
A large earthquake in the San Andreas Fault, on the other hand, he says, could create a devastating threat to humanity, infrastructure, and the economy, with implications that extend nationally and even globally. As ominous as that sounds, the truth is that Stewart may actually be understating the threat that Californians are facing. A few years ago, a team of scientists conducted a major study which found that major quakes in the distant past had caused, quote, part of the coastline south of Long Beach to drop by one and a half to three feet. Scientists from California State University, Fullerton, and the United States Geological Survey found evidence that older quakes caused part of the coastline south of Long Beach to drop by one and a half to three feet. Today, that could result in the area ending up at or below sea level, said Cal State Fullerton professor Mitt Kirby, who worked with the paper's lead author, graduate student Robert Leeper. Quote, it's something that would happen relatively instantaneously. Kirby said, probably today, if it happened, you would see seawater rushing in. In other words, scientists are telling us that if such a quake happened today, we could see areas along the California coastline go into the ocean permanently, I don't know how much clearer I can make it. We have entered a time when dramatic changes are happening to our planet, and this is something that I have been writing about for a long time, and even though much of the rest of the Ring of Fire is shaking like a leaf right now, most of those living along the California coastline have been lulled into a false sense of security because there has not been a massive quake on the West Coast for many, many years. But scientists assure us that the San Andreas Fault is loaded and ready to spring at any moment. And they have also warned us that the entire fault zone, quote, could unzip all at once, end quote. Let's hope that day is delayed for as long as possible, but if the hundreds of earthquakes that have happened in recent weeks are an indication, time could be running out a lot faster than most of us had anticipated. To do with the earthquakes that we recently had in Southern California, and this is it. We're in the area of Glen Avon, and we have a swarm of another three magnitude earthquakes in this area. Pulling out, you'll see where it is. It's just uh, a little bit, here we are, Los Angeles to here. It's about 100 miles east of Los Angeles. And uh, if we go into the regional information of it, Let's go into the uh, changes a little bit, going to Ariel. Okay, here we are. You can see the earthquake swarms that we had recently, but they don't show too many of the, the, the 1,000 swarms. They have been there. Let's pan out a little bit. Okay, look at that. Amazing. There's a lot, a lot of activity here at the Wanda Fuca plate as well. And this is Yellowstone up here. Okay. So if you go out of that, let's go into the regional activity if we can. Again. Okay, they don't seem to have anything. Fontana, Pedley, Rancho, Cucamonga. All right. But it's uh, on the San Andreas Fault, as we can see. Right there. These are the fault lines that we can see right there. Let's get a little bit clearer. Sorry about that, it's going slow today. I have a lot of windows opened. Okay, that's it right there. Earthquakes. Will it show? 
Historic real-time, no, it doesn't have much information. To have more information at the Altara map, seismic monitoring, you have, well, let's pull out, you'll see that the whole ring of fire is basically ringing, uh, the, the red are the uh, hourly earthquakes, and we've had a tremendous amount of activity. Uh, as I was posting some videos, I had the audio on the Popocatapetla volcano of uh, Mexico that has been going off, and it's still going off. I turned the audio off because it was uh, a disaster. Uh, there was just too much noise. Uh, it sounded like missiles, and uh, it's more quiet now, but it's been it's quieted down now. Now I see that uh, sounds like missiles going off, and then blasting that was uh, from the volcano. Even earthquakes. You could see the. Well, let me show you. What am I? What am I doing here? Why am I not showing you? Let's let's see. Is it on? Hold on. Okay, you can see that uh, all of this here, that, that is the, uh, that's the smoke from the volcano. Uh, it's a lot quieter now because all of this was really, really, uh, there was so much ash and smoke that it even had lightning coming out of it. Uh, now it's a lot more quiet as you can see. Much more quiet. Uh, let's see if we can go to the Colima. Where's Colima? Colima, okay. That was that was just like Popoketa Petle is now. Uh, I haven't been look, keeping my eye up, but this seems to be uh, volcanic ash, a uh, smoke as well. Uh, so both of them are in uh, Mexico. Okay, I have the sound off. All right. Let's see. I think they have vespers now. That's where the bells are ringing there. Okay, so let's go back to our. Uh, you see that the whole ring of fire is really shaking, and also we have a lot, a tremendous amount of shaking in Yellowstone these past few days. And of course, here we show it clearly. It shows it clearly here, whereas here it does not. Seismically, does not. Let's go back to this one, and um, we still have earthquake swarms there. Okay, this one is a lot more south from Los Angeles. And this is basically here, right? This, we're talking about this thing right here. Let's we'll zoom in. Riverside. Okay, basically this whole area, but that's that's the area that had the 1,000 earthquakes. Okay, magnitude one. That's why you can't feel them that much. Um, what's this one here? Magnitude 2.6. Okay. And uh, Yellowstone as well has had earthquake swarms this past, these past few days. As we've um, posted in the video a couple of hours ago by Ben Fiorulo, who explains that as well very nicely. Where is it? Let's see, up here. Okay, it's going slow because I have too many windows open. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let you. Uh, I'll give you the link and you can see it on your own. But basically, there's egg swarms as well right there. And I'll leave you a link so that you can keep an eye on it. Okay. So for you who are out there, please be careful. God bless you, and uh, be alert of what's going on. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, 
and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.